Hi, I'm Megan Timlin with Vintage View here at Bar Helix with Kendra Hi. talking about wine basics. I'm super new to this industry, so kind of welcome. So, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Take me through just the beginning here. What we can taste some wine and of course. see what's up. <laughs> yeah. So first things first with wine, just know that knowing that you love wine is all that you need to worry about. Okay. Doesn't matter what you do know. Doesn't matter what you don't know. Varieties, countries. Don't worry about that. Okay. As long as you know kind of what you like and are able to share that with the person that's serving you, whether that be just a regular server or sommelier, they will help guide you. So you don't awesome. have to stress. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So what I pulled for us was something that I like to do with people who are new to wine or interested in wine, which is kind of take you through opening a bottle first okay. and foremost. You got to be able to drink the wine, yep. so that's key. Um, and then after that, we'll talk a little bit about this bottle, which is fun because it tastes like something that it isn't. And that's Ooh. always cool for people who are starting to explore the world of wine. Okay. So with um, opening your bottle, first thing is, I think having the right tool is pretty essential. This is what's known as the waiter's friend corkscrew, and it's okay. called that because it's kind of impossible to break the corkscrew or break the cork or, or mess anything up with it. So it's got this cool double hinge there. Okay. So that allows you to get extra leverage on the cork when you're actually opening the bottle. Okay. Um, so when you're first starting out, if there is foil, you would remove that with mm -hmm. the little blade that's here. Yep. But we don't have any foil in this case. Okay. So we're going straight to the cork. All right. And it's nice to put the bottle on a flat surface just like that. Don't worry about trying to juggle the bottle or hold on to it. Okay. Um, so what I've always been taught is to kind of just take your index finger and point it right there where the worm starts to kind of end its little spin. Okay. And then I'm going to remove the bottle just because it's hard to do sitting down. And then just use that tip to kind of start the twisting motion, just like I did. And then you're, you see it's in there yep. firmly because I just used the right amount of pressure. And then you're just gonna twist it till you get to a place where this first little hinge can hit that lip. Okay. And then you can start it just like that, right? So if the cork breaks, what am I doing wrong? You either haven't gone farther enough in with the worm okay. to get the right amount of leverage, or maybe you just have like super hero, hero strength. Uh, <laughs> one of the two. Okay. Um, yeah, so if that's the case, yeah, just kind of reinsert the corkscrew okay. back into the cork and start again. Gotcha. Yeah, no worries if that happens. Then what I do is I remove the cork fully, and then every single bottle of wine, no matter what, you have to smell it, right? Okay. We're not smelling to see if the cork is good or fresh or don't smell the cork okay. either because that might not tell you much. It could tell you something, but it wouldn't be enough to sort of make the right decision. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is, again, smell the bottle. And you're smelling to make sure that the wine is not flawed. Okay. So you take a sniff. should just smell like wine. Mm -hmm. Right? Nothing else. No, don't, not the aromas of wine particularly, but just not anything sort of moldy, musty, dirty. That would be the sign that perhaps the wine has got cork taint. Okay. And that's all you're checking for. So quick, all right. quick sniff. Perfect. And then pour. All right. And I always do a little twist okay. at the end. You're not working in a restaurant, so you don't have a napkin, right, to catch the drips. Yep. If you do the twist, hopefully that will let the bottle kind of naturally stop and no drips hit the table. And so what are we drinking? This is which a lot of people Aww. are unfamiliar with. Or if they've had Riesling, they sort of have a perception that it's sweet. And they think of Germany or Austria, which is where the grape mm -hmm. variety is most uh, frequently found. Okay. This Riesling is from California. And oh. it's unlike most Riesling that I think you will have ever had. So I wanted you to try it. So cheers. cheers. Little sniff. It smells gorgeous. So Give why do you, you just smell it? What do you get when you smell so it? So for me, um, you know, smelling a lot of Rieslings, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to kind of get some of the fresh stone fruit, which would be peaches, apricots, okay. things of that nature, um, nectarines. So it's really fresh. I get a little bit of light floral. Um, yeah. Think about honeysuckle. Think about maybe um, a crushed white um, flower of mm -hmm. some sort. Very perfumey. Makes me excited for spring. Doesn't it? <laughs> it's such a great spring wine. Yeah. Good call. It makes yeah, me excited I for spring. I can't wait. If only it would stop snowing. Yeah, yeah right? So then let's, let's All right, taste. let's taste it. Ooh. Right? That's nice. It's juicy, mouth-watering, yep. kind of refreshing. Very much so. Like you said, very springy. Yeah. What do you taste? 
Just it's any first thing that comes to your mouth. For, I mean, I got the peach. Yeah. A little bit of peach juicy in it. Peach, yeah. Juicy peach. And then it's a little floral. Yeah, yeah. It's about I think what citrusy, I got. Um, juicy, refreshing. Yeah. And I think that's the job of wine is to make us happy. Yeah. Not be nerding out unless you want to. But other than that, it should just taste good and make you feel happy. Yeah, I'm a typical red drinker, so. I'm glad we're so drinking this white wine. So tasting white then. is very Especially interesting. Especially in winter, lots of people sort of stop drinking white wine when it's cold outside. Yeah. And this wine, because it does have a tiny bit more weight and body mm -hmm. than a typical, maybe like a Pinot Grigio. Yep. This is a perfect wine to drink, even though it's still cold outside. Yeah. Super. So Enjoy. what other, what is one other wine tip you would give any newbie? Oh my gosh, I would say, um, ask the person like the place where you shop for wine mm -hmm. develop a relationship with them okay so keep Let going them, to the same place <laughs> yes because as you are exploring different wines at home you can go back to that store and say hey you sold me this really great pinot noir last week this is what i thought this is what i liked or didn't like and then mm -hmm. hopefully over time that person will start to kind of get to know you and then they can start to recommend you into things that will continue to develop your palate awesome yeah well thank you so much for taking the Absolutely, time to give me pleasure. a little powwow on this exactly and we'll be back for future episodes and i look forward to talking Happy to wine you drinking thanks Kendra. yeah